Hi folks, Jack Spierka with the uh, next lesson in the uh, permaculture series. Today we're going to talk about hugel culture and a couple different types. In fact, what we're actually going to talk about is what real hugel culture looks like, what it is, uh, its origins in Europe, and, and kind of the why behind it, and kind of the after effect of the irrigation thing. Uh, up here, this is what you would call maybe classic Holzer uh, Hugel culture, who's probably not the guy that, that created it, but he's the best well-known person uh, that's, that's practicing Hugel culture today. And you can see this mound is going to be somewhere between a neighbor of five and six feet tall, a meter and a half to two meters high. Got a little stick man there to give you some scale on it. And you can see that the wood doesn't make up a huge amount of it. There's actually a lot of cover. And the way that this originated was that during planting during the wet seasons in Europe, this would actually be to keep it dry, not wet. This is to build it up. It's also to increase the surface area. If this is five to six feet here, and this is five to six feet here, and they're built with a point, and this is a 70 degree angle, and it, they're built really kind of, they look like that when they first get them done, and then after everything's put in and you start doing your plantings and all, you go along the top of the hoe and, and, and level that top off. And you never really plant into the top. You're planting all along here. And when you plant like trees and bushes into here, you're actually planting them like this. So the roots are going in this way and the tree is actually growing out and up like this. And this is more for your bushes like your currants and stuff like that or raspberries so that they can get out and get to the sun. But there's a couple things going on here. One, during the wet season, we're going to have less problems with things being bogged down. During the dry season, this wood is going to become spongy and it's going to absorb a lot of water and wick it out into the bed, which is going to reduce or eliminate irrigation requirements depending on the climate and a myriad of other things. But since I can also plant over here, right? And the, the and Holzer polycultures the heck out of this. There'll be potatoes, shallots, onions, gooseberries, currants, uh, different trees. I mean, you it, it's it's you almost have to see it uh, a seed mixture that's you know twenty or thirty varieties of different seeds, corn and beans, and it it, it was pretty impressive uh, when I was actually on site in Montana. I got to see one of these go in, and they're they're huge expanses and. This is something that would be hard to do in a backyard. You need some space to really make this work. And these things are, you know, uh, you know 50, 60 yards long. And uh, they're usually constructed in uh, groups of two or three to a row so that when you're walking between them, you have them up on both sides. That creates microclimates by reducing wind. If you're in a cool climate, that wind reduction actually protects against frost and freezing. If you're in a very hot and dry climate, the wind protection reduces evaporation. Both of those work toward irrigation. So my point with hugel culture is the wood alone is not the only thing that's reducing or eliminating the irrigation requirement. And it's very subject to the type of plants you're growing, the environment that you're in, how much rain you get, when you get your rain. It's not maybe the magic bullet a lot of people think it is, but it's really, really close because it does work very, very effectively. Um, I'll go more into Holzer style Huga culture in a future episode. I just wanted to ground you in the original concept. Hugel is about high beds. So I'm talking high, like this high. Now people ask me, how do you harvest this? Well, look at the angle. If you har you know, if it's you just right, see it's it's really easy, you just reach out in front of you. Right, so if you're a, a five and a half foot tall guy, you want to build your beds around five to five and a half feet tall. I mean, that's you build them to the person that's going to be working them. It's actually very easy, and it's a lot less bending over. Um, so we'll go deeper into that. But here's the problem with this: a lot of people aren't going to be wanting to build a five six foot, uh, you know, bed in their backyard, and they don't have the room to create these expanses. And it's really cool the way some of them were done. They kind of had the one end where, like, the one bed bent like this and then the other bed bent like that so you couldn't see into it and when you walk through it was almost like coming through a maze and it was like this giant outdoor room it's really beautiful but how do we do this in backyards well the answer is we we probably don't this will get the neighbors complaining or whatever if you're out in a farm this is a great way to go so there's some different things that have been done this is one of the first ones that we experimented with and the green represents dirt and the black represents the, uh, the, the lines of the property. This was a slope about like that. You can see I've continued it on here. We actually did six of these in a row going down grade. We brought in a machine and we, we went in and we leveled terraces for each bed. Uh, then we dug holes of about 30 inches in depth and we filled them with rotted wood. 
we put about 10 inches of cover on top of that and then put a 10 inch raised bed on top of it and you've probably seen other of my videos that show this and I'll put a link to some of them so you can see the construction of these in the video notes today but when you look at this it looks like your typical square raised beds in a backyard uh, the stuff we said not to do yesterday, but in this instance, we've we've kind of changed things. We've we've created contours instead of used existing contours, because by coming down grade and hitting this flat terraced area, the water slows down, stops, and we actually have these terraces at about a half degree pitch back into the earth. So they're like a big flat. Uh, th these beds are five feet wide, so each terrace is about I'd say six to seven feet wide. So it's like a seven foot wide swale and it drops the water. So water comes trucking down from above and hits this area. It then seeps into the wood and it begins to accumulate down here in the wood. And some of it will atrophy down, but a lot of it's gonna follow the slope. So when this one fills up, it starts filling up this one. And then when there's too much for it to go down, it just kind of spills off. And as that happens, it continues and each reservoir kind of fills the next reservoir. Um, we had a third of an inch of rain in May and we didn't water this at all in May and everything survived. Peppers, uh, corn, uh, tomatoes, cucumbers and things like that. What we did notice though was a lot of our cucumbers for instance started to get kind of bitter and uh, our corn was just not really going the way we wanted to go. So we've taken to doing some irrigation here. And one of the things I want to point out is, yeah, we can go with no irrigation if we have to, but all of these things like yesterday when I talked about contour gardening, uh, things like this with terraces and hugel culture combined, these things all improve efficiency if you do irrigate. So it's not an all or nothing thing. It's okay to irrigate this stuff. And in the first year, you really do need to irrigate because this wood is going to be brand new and not sponging anything up. This system's almost a year old now, so it's matured, and the wood that was initially put in here was already semi-decayed, so it was an accelerated system. This is another system that we put in recently. In this system, we did what we call like a Google light, right? These, these beds are only two to three feet high. They're, the one that I built is about like that right there. I think both of my hands are in the shot for you. And this is kind of pretty close to scale. We, what we did is we found a bunch of wood at our compost facility and we simply laid down a couple big logs and then a couple small sticks. So these big logs are stuff about like that. Uh, the small ones on top are about like that. And it's not quite two and two. It, you just kind of work out what you're going to do. What we did, we went along and we found a contour line and we flagged it using the A-frame level. We laid the wood down, and then we just piled the compost and topsoil and humus on top of it and planted into it. And it's doing fairly well, but this, because that wood is brand new and because we built it before the rains came, so there's not a lot of contour uh, absorption of rainwater if you do it before the, you know, or we did it after the rains of the spring came. So this was built in summer. So we have to irrigate it this first year and get that built up. Now people ask in all of these scenarios, what about the wood taking nitrogen up? The wood will take nitrogen up. It's not that big a deal. It's not a sink. Like the nitrogen doesn't go in there and go away. It's a trap. The nitrogen goes in. It's trapped in the wood. As the wood begins to decay, it releases it back out. So supplemental nitrogen in the form of organic fertilizer in your first year a good idea a way to do that really really efficiently when you lay your wood down get a good organic fertilizer and coat the wood in organic fertilizer then bring your soil up on top of it add another layer of fertilizer and it's kind of like your normal gardens for the first year and then you get the effect of the wood in the second and subsequent years as it begins to break down and sponge up so that's and then this is one other thing that we've done we built three of these this is the wood here and this is you're looking from above and it's about a four foot uh, diameter mound and it's also you know about two and a half three feet tall and the wood is built up almost like a campfire except not what you would do in a campfire where you'd have a lot of space in there because we don't want a lot of space in there and then we simply piled on top of it and then you're able to plant in circular patterns around it. All of these systems will work to varying degrees in different ways. This again is classic traditional hugelkultur, European, Austrian, German style, and it has many goals beyond just the irrigation improvements. But we can take the one component of it, the wood, and we can put it into different perspectives. And remember the rule I taught you yesterday. If you're going to say, but what if, the answer is probably what? 
it doesn't matter. And if you're going to say, can I, the answer is probably yes, and you probably should try it. So if you're thinking, well, can I take this and do it uh, in a multi-bed contour bed, or can I take this terracing approach, but also put the terraces on, yes. Right? That's always the way it tends to work out. And that's what I want you guys to remember. Follow the principles, follow the ethics, and do whatever you think might work and then evaluate the results. This is not rocket science. It's actually a lot more complicated. So you don't read how to do it. You have to learn as you go. And you take the basic, basic principles and use them in your own individual designs. With that, this has been another uh, permaculture video. We'll be back with another one for you tomorrow.